Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Got a little bit of cold today, but I'm not going to let that stop me. So, throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about generic methods. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website. Um, select menu. Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to generic methods. You might be thinking that, that a generic method is just a method contained inside of a generic class. Now to a limited extent that is sort of true. A true generic method will have its own type parameters that are independent of the class type parameters. A generic method does not have to be contained inside of a generic class. A generic method can be in a regular run-of-the-mill class. The declaration statement for a generic class looks like this. You'll have your type variable or type variables, right, inside of the uh, chevrons or diamond syntax. Then you'll have your return type, which is an ordinary method return type, and a method name, and your ordinary parameter list, and then of course your method body. So for example, like um, v will be the type variable and then I'm using bounded types I do like extends number right and then I'm going to have that being a double return type and then calculate volume and then of course uh, the three parameter parameter variables here are, will be of type v type variable to v and length height and width and then I'm going to return length dot double value times height dot double value times width dot double value right and double value is a method in the number class, right? So any, um, um, basically any subclass of number will, is guaranteed to have these particular methods in it. So the above example also makes use of bounded type parameters. Now please watch my generics bounded type parameters tutorial as this tutorial will expand on several concepts from that tutorial. In this tutorial I will demonstrate the use of generic methods in both generic in both a generic class and a regular class. So, yeah, if this extends number does not make sense to you, um, watch the generics bounded types tutorial on that before continuing with this one here. Okay, so let's get started on this. Let's come down here, highlight some of the source code. Highlight all of the source code, I should say. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to my uh, command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't have that, you can create one really fast by right-clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next and finish. It's just that easy. First thing I'm going to do is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler, and press enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You'll make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory using the MD command called Java, and I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to change directory to the Java folder, and then I'll make a directory here uh, called generic methods. Change directories to that folder, and then notepad generic java okay okay let's go ahead and paste this stuff in here control v to paste or right click and select paste let's come up here and save this okay now i've got my exact same uh, generic box class from the unbounded um, or the bounded type parameter tutorial there so and what i've done is i've added in this calculate volume method here. So you'll see I've added the static keyword so we can directly access it. And then V is just the type variable. And then extends number is basically the bounded type, right? And just a quick reiteration on that, by extending number, I'm gonna bring back over the, the number API from the Java 8 API here. And number has all of these various different um, subclasses, right? Kind of interested in like Byte, double, float, integer, long, short, and stuff like that. Those are the ones that kind of apply to this one here. But you'll notice this is a uh, this is an abstract class number, right? So when any of these extend it, or any of these subclasses extend class number, they have to um, 
I have to implement these abstract ones there because those are concrete classes there. So you'll know they'll have double, volu double value method inside of there, and that returns the value of the specified number as a double, right? Okay, so that's that's pretty basic on that if you watched my last tutorial there. So I'm going to be returning a primitive double type there. And then, of course, I've got my parameter list here, all of type variable v. And then I'm just going to be returning the basically the length, double value, height, double value, and width, double value, times that to get that. Okay? So that's the new thing in here. So let's go ahead and kind of run through this, this first thing up here. <coughs> in which case, in the generic methods class, in the main method here, I'm basically doing what... Um, a couple of just little reviews from the bounded types parameter here where I'm doing like a, an integer and a double and I'm passing some values to the constructor and these are getting auto boxed here right because this would basically be auto boxing integer types and these would be basically auto boxing double types and when I say double I'm uppercase D double double class types right and these are the class wrapper integer upper, uppercase I integer class types for the wrapper classes. Okay, and then displaying that to the console. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's make sure this is saved. Let's compile this here real quick, just to give you a quick refresher. And we'll run it. And so, in the, um, the first two here, right? This is exactly what we had before. The volume of box one is 140, the volume of box two is 375.5. And that's using the, the get volume, um, just regular old method that I had here before, right? Which is just returning a double type here. So now, because I've made this new generic method static type, we can directly invoke it. So I'm just going to show you how to you know, just an example of doing that. So in the next two lines, next two statements, I should say this one right here and this one here, displaying this string literal, plus then I'm doing, you know, the box class and invoking the calculate volume, passing that method 5, 7, and 12. And those are getting auto boxed integer, an uppercase integer, right? So when these come in here, right, because I'm doing V, is my type variable and that extends number, right? And if we come over here to the number class, right? Integer is a subclass of that. Okay. So that'll get auto boxed in the basically that integer type there, right? And then on the next one here, I'm passing that same, I'm invoking that same method, but passing it like 5.73, that'll get auto boxed to a double type when I say double, I'm talking about uh, this double right here. And, <coughs> excuse me. And this one will get auto boxed to an integer, uppercase integer, like that. And this one will get auto boxed to a double. So, auto boxing is very important, too, to understand that. I've got a tutorial on auto boxing if you're not familiar with that, because this might be going okay. That, that's kind of interesting there, right? So, anyway, so that basically gets us our, our volume here. Invoking static generic method calculate volume 420.0 and then the next one 448.91, right? So we've got a mix of whole numbers and fractional numbers there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is, is uh, go down to basically, <coughs> excuse me, get some water here. I'm going to go down to the old style like box class here, right? And you've, if, you, if you've been watching my tutorials, you've seen this one many times, you know, where we're just basically declaring like um, some private int types, length, type, width. It's uh, well encapsulated here. The constructor is setting it there. And then I've got this get volume method, which will return back that, right? Um, so in the first, first portion of this here, I'm doing an old box OB equals a new instance of old box and passing the constructor 555, right? Which is our just basically our good old way of doing it. And then I'm returning get volume here, right? Length times width times height and displaying that to the console there. So we got the volume of OB is 125, which is good. 5 times 5 is 25 times 5. So that works out great there. OK, 
okay? Now, in this good old class here, let's say for example, this class had been written many years ago and all of a sudden you're like, well, you know, we need to expand this old box class to take all kinds of stuff, you know? We want it to be able to take floats, we want it to be able to take uh, doubles, you know, and so on and so forth there. And <clears throat> so we could go through in here and we could do all this, uh -huh, all kinds of crazy code in there, you know, like uh, have other variables in there, like double type variables and float type variables and various different constructors, you know. Uh, but we can also just simply take and put this generic method inside of this ordinary run of the mill old class here, right? That is perfectly legal and actually really encouraged there too. So I've made this thing static there, so now we can access, you know, old box dot and then, you know, basically the same thing that we we're doing up here in our new generic method. So old box calculate volume, old box calculate volume, and I'm passing in like, for example, a, uh, this would be a double type, and this will be auto box to an integer, and this will be auto box to a double there, right? And we can see old box calculate volume 153.72. Right, and <clears throat> then in this next statement, what I'm doing here is I'm passing in the first parameter is a new byte, and notice that's uppercase B, right? This particular byte value, and then the second parameter I'm passing in a new double value, and then a new integer value. So you can mix and match all of these various different subclasses, right? Because of the bounded type parameter here on the um, on the generic method. Any subclass of number can be is is a valid variable type, right? And these don't have to be all the same thing, right? So these this can be any subclass of number. This can be any subclass of number, and this can be any subclass of number on those on those variable types there. Okay, so that's why this is like perfectly legit on doing something like that too as well. And I'm demonstrating a lot of little little cool things about that there, so you can see. The old box calculate volume comes out to 237.5. Okay, so we can do a nice mix and match of what, what we do in there. All right, um, so that'll pretty much kind of take care of like, all right, let me explain, hey, here's what a generic method is. And I put it into a generic class. Now you can see because I'm using V here for the, the type variable name, <clears throat> um, that's completely independent of the T that's coming in here for the type variable name up here that's in the box. Um, that's in the class parameter list as opposed to the method um, type parameter list. Okay, I've got one more method down here and that's volume displayer. It's a good old regular class. It's not a generic class and it just simply contains these two generic methods in it there, right? So the first, and both of them are static, so I'm going to be just directly invoking them there. And then so I've got t extends number and then this first one, is, both of them are void return types too. First one's cube volume, and g length, g height, g width, and then see, there's just a regular old, uh, you know, string being passed in there. So you can mix and match your parameter list in your in your methods too as well. Not that you couldn't have, but I wanted to just demonstrate that too as well. So that'll just display to the console this string literal plus, of course, <coughs> s, and then plus this string literal, and then of course our um, our calculate volume for a <coughs> cube, excuse me, <coughs> okay, and then the other one is a cylinder volume, very similar, you know, only I'm doing just a radius height and then a string there, and that'll say the volume of whatever this is, and this is the calculation for figuring out the volume of a cylinder, which is basically pi times uh, radius squared and then uh, times the height, okay? Okay, so um, coming back up here, I have declared and initialized five primitive variables here, byte b, short s, and i, float f, and double d. So in the cube volume here, I'm passing in b, i, and f. So um, <laughs> hexadecimal a, and then um, i, which is integer, well, int type, and then f, which is a float, 3.5. So that will display to the console the volume of my cube is 245.0. All right, so that's pretty cool there. 
various different types got auto boxed into that and so we passed a, a mixture of that in there all right so in the cylinder volume there i'm passing in the double which is 1.25 and then the short of eight, uh, eight there right and then my cylinder and that comes out to be the volume of my cylinder is 39.269875 okay um that pretty much will do it for the for the generic method. So it should be pretty clear that the you know a generic method is is not just a uh, you know method inside of a generic class. It can be completely independent of the class. The variables of a generic method are just limited to well, the parameters that are limit are that the same thing. They're they're local to this scope here of this <clears throat> of this method here, right? And um, that'll do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Get rid of that, get rid of that, and so just leave you with one quick final thought here. A generic method does not rely on object state and typically has its own type variables that are local to the scope of the generic method. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.